Hi do everybody and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. We are playing Deck of Ears Craft of the World one more time today. I think, and I don't mean that as in like this is the last time we're gonna play it. I realized the second that came out of my mouth that it sounded sort of fatalistic. But anyways, we had been playing, and obviously we've been playing the game, but we had dealt with a couple of invasions. We had finished our longhouse, and we had gotten all of these nice wooden floors laid out. So everything's looking a lot nicer right now in the Dwarvish Kingdom of, you know, whatever, wherever. I don't know. It sounds like Shakira made the name to our city. But anyways, I think the spot that I'd like to be in right now is in this episode, I think we need, definitely need to make some progress on our crafting tree. I think that's where we should apply ourselves. The downside, you'll remember in the last episode, we were crafting up a great deal, a number of windows. And unfortunately, in crafting those windows, they've got stucco in the background. If you take a look at them, the windows don't actually just place where you want them to go. They've got stucco behind them, I think, so I don't know if this is actually going to work the way that I want it to, which is sort of depressing because I really wanted to have some windows in my house, and I think it's going to put in, yeah, it's going to put in stucco behind them. So let's see if we can find ourselves a window that does not require the use of, like a very generic window, essentially. A window that does not draw attention. The window that probably doesn't get asked out to prom, basically. I think that's it right there. Let's go back to this menu and see if we can find it anywhere. Should be in our furniture, maybe? Furniture? Ah, square window. There it is. So that's the window we actually wanted. So let's think about making a few more of those. We need some more glass. Luckily, we've got plenty of it. It's been sitting around all over the place, so that's good. We've still got loads and loads of wood as well. And you know what, guys? I've just, I'm making too many. My, my wood joke quota is too high right now, so I'm going to avoid it. And I think the way that I'm going to do this... I don't really know where I want these. I mean, it might be sorta of cool. I don't technically know the length of my house. And so I might give this sort of warehouse windowing. Like the kind of windows that kids throw rocks at and shoot slingshots at. If you've ever been in a big city, you'll know what I'm talking about. Like there's these long warehouses and they're usually out by the docks. Like in San Francisco, for example, you can see them all over the place around like Emeryville. There's like these big long warehouses and they've got these windows along the sides everywhere. If you've ever seen them, you'll know them the moment you see them. But anyways, let's get back to making a few more windows because I think that's going to work out just the way I'd like it to. We can make small adjustments to the way that they're laid out to ensure that they're symmetrical here in the future. And this upper area could just sort of be our warehouse work zone and then underground will be where everybody's sleeping and doing their deal. I don't really know what to do with these fishing rods. I should figure out what to do with those. I should equip somebody with them and go fishing because we do have recipes to make like fish stew and fun stuff like that. Take that glass, we'll click the other one into place, we'll take that and click it into there and maybe like 10 more windows and then everything should work out perfectly fine. It's already down in our hot bar so I don't need to stress about that any further. Yeah and I offset it wrong. Damn. Okay so now we've got to figure out a way to make that symmetrical or I can just ignore it. And just like pretend like it didn't happen. We can knock that out right there maybe. It's a tough call. That's something I'll have to weasel with a little bit in the future. Oh, and it took the wood wall out too. That's fun. That's funsies. It's a little weird looking now. I didn't want that in the front, man. What are you doing? Move that, and there's a window behind a wall, and then break that out, and then we'll put that in the background. They did it again over here, too. That's fine, whatever, you know. You can't always trust your dwarves to do the right thing. Sometimes they just do dumb stuff, and to be fair, it's usually a function of the dumb stuff that I do, too. There we go. That's looking a little bit more symmetrical. I don't really like it, but we'll have to deal with it, I suppose. I could make the entire background all windows, but maybe I'll do that in between episodes, because I don't think you guys are very interested in seeing that happen. Anyways... Let's have a look around, and I think I need to place another one of these as well. It looks as though our house is not completely being contained, and if it it's containing large parts of our house within the background here too, which is a little weak. Let's start having a look around for some better resources. A little bit of coal right there, but it's holding up the floor, so I don't really want to get at it. We could go after this stuff right here, underneath where we killed off all of those bugs. And I think that is what I'm going to do. So let's get down in here and we're going to get all this mithril that we can stuff into our pockets. 
we may find ourselves unpathfindingly. Well, we're not gifted with pathfinding right now, but they're just gonna have to deal with it. They can climb up the back walls in a pinch, so it'll be all right. We've gotten ourselves a carpentry book too. Another care package down. Is it just another? Oh, it's a Santa hat, and it's on the roof. Weak. Well, nobody's gonna be able to get at that one. Maybe I'll put a portal up on the roof in the future. We're getting plenty of mana at this point anyway, so why stress about it? Why fill yourself with the stress of the mess when you can act like the best? And so everybody's loaded up with mithril now. Let's go to our crafting tree and let's have a look around and we'll figure out what's going to put us on the path. I mean, we don't even have iron armor yet, so we may want to work towards that first. We have to put in a round window before we can go any further. So let's do that. Put that just in the space with the other window. We'll drop that right there. And then the moment that it's in, we'll take it back out. There it is, a little bit of freebie XP. I knocked out the back wall on accident. That's okay. I didn't like that wall anyways. That wall had been talking trash about my mom, so you know what? Forget that wall. That wall got smashed just like he deserved to. I think I can also go through... <laughs> kind of a secret trap door right there. That's kind of humorous. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to replace the back wall. But it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to, so I may have to take all this flooring out to put in this back wall, which is a little odd and inconvenient. As you can see, we've still got stone and dirt running in the background, and I don't like that very much. It makes me sad. It'll allow me to dig it out right there, but it won't allow me to put... That's... Yeah, that's going to become a problem later on. Whatever. We're not going to worry about it right now. It's not something that's absolutely 100% necessary at the moment. And then I'll give them a portal so they can get back home. I do wish that I could close these off. That's my one concern about the portals, is I wish I could close them, because sometimes your dwarves will come back through and just idle right here, and since this cave has no access to anywhere else, it becomes a weird spot where you're like, all right, dwarf, so you're deciding to relax in a place that would mean your death. Amazing, you're so brilliant, my dwarfy beardy friend. A round mirror. I don't know what I want to do with that right now. Let's make a, let's work on this little row right here. We're gonna make a wagon first. So let's go and to make a wagon, I just clicked the wrong thing. There it is. We need two wheels. Not four. This must be some kind of weird motorcycle wagon. I'm going to assume it works because dwarves are known for their craftsmanship. And with a fistful of nails, we can get that there. And it's not going to make me deploy this, is it? Because I don't even have any rails. If it makes me deploy it, that's going to be a little bit disappointing. It's going to become frustrating. Another book over there. A Miller's book. Okay, cool. We could always use a little bit more skill in our province, so that works out. Other stuff that I think I can have people work on while we're sitting around waiting for things to happen. I'm going to put in where my scaffoldings go. There they are. I knew my scaffoldings were around somewhere. I'm going to put in another scaffold right there. And we're going to do our best to mine out some of this stuff so that we can make use of it in the future. There's a little bit of iron, there's a little bit of mithril, and lately our iron supplies, I think we're sort of low, and I know we're going to end up making plate mail or something in the future anyways, which always makes me nervous about kind of having it sit around. So it didn't work. We do have the wagon right here. It's ready to go. Can I just sit it on the ground somewhere? No, I have to put down rails. Okay. Well, let's put down rails then. Put down a couple rails right there. And for the sake of being interesting, we'll take the wagon and we'll drop that right on top the moment that it's there. We're out of food. I've gone and made myself... Oh, never mind. We're not out of food. I'm zoomed out too far. I've made a bunch of salads out of all the greens we had. So we're just going to have steak and salad from now on. A nice Caesar followed with a good sirloin. A better dinner, I don't think that there is. Unless you're like a fish person. Some people are really into fish. And so if you're into fish, I suppose there might be a better dinner to be had somewhere. We're also going to need more mithril once we get to that point, but I don't think... I mean, we've been collecting a lot of mithril lately, so everything should work out in our favor. Oh, we got a fuzzy bugger that's attacking us right now, and he's going to drop all of his goodies down into the water there. We do have a platform. Let me see if I can drop a ladder down all the way before he does something dumb. Oh, he's going to make a dive for it. That's crazy. Is he going to drown? Please tell me he's not going to drown. Okay, good. Let me go back to my crafting menu, and let me grab a couple ladders. And once I've let me grabbed a couple of those, 
We'll put those ladders in right there to make that descent a little bit easier. I don't think ladders can go underwater. We can try. Oh, it looks like they can. So I guess we'll have the ladder go down in sort of a swimming pool configuration. I love swimming pools. I'm a big time swimmer. I used to be on the swim team and I really, really enjoy swimming. Something about being weightless. I think that's what it is for me. I really enjoy just sort of being weightless in the water. Now then, let me get back to my scaffolding since we're out of ladders and really there's no need for us to keep ladders around anymore. We'll put new scaffoldings in right there. We'll get rid of those ones. We'll get that last couple. We need that little bit of mithril. I think in the end of the game, we're going to need a lot of mithril in order to make the gear that we need to fight like dragons or whatever the hell it is. I've heard rumors that there are strange mythical creatures involved in this game. And so if we're going to equip up to fight with them, I'd definitely like to have better gear in that case. Let's dig out that back wall there for the extra iron. And looking at our craft tree, I think we still need to continue making progress. We've got the wa- oh, they didn't place the wagon, hold on. Or I didn't place the wagon to be more fair about it. There we go. Now what the wagon does, as you guys had said down in the comments, but for anybody that hadn't seen what the wagon does, it's basically a fast travel method if you can get it set up. I think it will go across gaps, but I'm not positive about that. Essentially they ride in the wagon, but it costs a lot of iron to lay down all the tracks, I think. Let me have a look at what the tracks might cost. Yeah, it costs you two iron, so it's going to take you a ton of iron to get your tracks done. In most cases, I just don't think it's going to be an equitable solution, basically. I don't think you're going to get out what you put into that solution. I want to see if maybe we can fish some of these anglers out. I don't really know how to do it, but we can try. I'm going to go... I, I'm going to assume that it's done through the equipment menu. Oh, you deploy the fishing rod, maybe. Maybe the fishing rod is like a piece of... We'll build a wooden wall right there. And what that'll do is it'll give us kind of a little pier. And once that pier's in the way, I think we can drop... It's not showing up as equipment, so I think you deploy the fishing rod. So we'll try that once that's all down. Doesn't appear to be working quite as I figured it might. Interesting. Well, I'll have to fiddle with this doodad a little bit. I'm not really too positive on how we use it. It's definitely here in the menu. Let me see. They take fishing rods. Okay, so those are left in the stockpile. Oh, you flag the location for fishing. Okay, so that's how it works. I knew there was probably a simplistic way to do it, I just didn't really know how. You flag the location that you want for fishing, and while we're doing that, we may consider fishing up on top of the map too, if there's anything around. It doesn't look like we have a whole lot of fishing locations though, so I guess I'll flag that for fishing, and then we'll put a portal in right there. So that once we get going on that, we can start working down opposite ends of the crafting tree because we do need fish to make fish stew. And so everything is sort of chained together in this game. You have no real choice. You've got to sort of jump in headlong for everything that you want. Now then, where's that barrel recipe at? It's got to be around here somewhere. Is it furniture maybe? We already have a barrel. I think it's the one that we looted from somewhere else, so I'm just going to deploy that somewhere. I think the barrel looked good over by our stockpile. It makes sense that there would be a barrel by the stockpile. You never know what you're going to be storing. Put that right there. You can't build it there? Alright, well, whatever. We'll put it over there then. Our dwarves are really, really good at drowning, like to an, an embarrassing extent. He's going to hang out and fish. Let's see how this works. Oh, it works just like that. The fish don't appear to respawn at the rate one might hope, though, so I don't know. Interesting. I'm just sort of watching how the whole thing plays out. And it's an odd system. Like, sometimes they... Okay, well, it's fished out now, so that's going to be that. We're under attack once again, which is never... 
an odd occurrence. He's fighting with a chicken when he should be fighting with all the things trying to murder him. He's managed to kite out and kill one of the skeletons. He's going to kill the second one now. And he killed the zombie. That guy should be getting all kinds of levels up. He is definitely going to have a warm bed tonight. All the dwarf females are going to be like, Oh yeah, red beardy man with a bow. We want to hang out with you because you killed all the zombies that were coming to ransack us. Then again, you guys have told me that you can't really tell the difference between a male and a female dwarf, so that might be a female dwarf. He might be the brave of dwarfs right now. Who knows? Let's go down. Oh, there's another zombie right there, and he's chewed his way through our wall, being the dick that zombies frequently are. We've got another fuzzy bugger down here causing problems. We're going to drop more loot in the water. Where was our other little underwater fishing hole? It was right here. I'm going to set a fishing node right there and a fishing node right there. Now that everybody's done with this other stuff off to the side, back to our crafting menu now. Oh, I have lamps. I forgot that I had these. Let's put in some wall lamps, make our house a little bit more illuminated. We'll just go like in between these, like so. No, I don't like that. We'll go... Well, I don't really know how I want those to be configured. I guess we'll go like that, and then like that. Very nice. Increasing the comfort of our home. We're only at 41%, though. We are 41% comfortable, which assumes... I guess there's probably, like, bed bugs. We're a little bit itchy. If I was only half comfortable, you can assume that I'd probably be bitching pretty hard at this point. The point of this episode, let's get back to it, because the point was to... Oh, it looks like I do have to craft a barrel. That's interesting. I figured if I just deployed one, they wouldn't bother me any further. That makes a bow. Hold on, that's not what I want. You guys are killing me with this stuff. Okay, good. There it is. Myself a couple more bits of wood there. We'll go with iron, and then we need a handful of nails. Oh, we just needed to build it. Okay, you need to build and place, so the place still counted. We need the large table, so let's go back to our planks and we'll make one of those. There's our table. That's going to have to be crafted, which works out okay. We'll also do the round mirror. I want to make sure that we're building as many things in this episode as we can. I want to be able to showcase as much of the loot. You have to use an iron sword for that. That's weird because there's hammers behind it, so I don't know how the sword comes into play there. But I guess we need an extra iron sword to make that work. Go through my menus and make sure that there's nothing else that I feel like crafting at the moment or that the game is going to require me to craft any. We can make beer! Oh, hell yes! Well, then let's make some beer. Why are we even beating around the bush with that idea? I love myself some beer, more specifically malt liquor. I love malt liquor. Let's see. Oh, we've made 10 beers. Hell yeah. I guess those are probably going to have to be brewed. Are they going to do that in the barrel? Let's watch and find out. Let's figure out where the beer is made at, whether they're going to make it at the... Ah, they're going to make it over the fire. Okay. I was wondering if they were going to go over to the barrel and make it there, since usually that's how you do it, but it's cool. Whatever. We've made ourselves that table. Let's go ahead and deploy that. Oh, he hasn't brought it back yet. It's got to go to the stockpile first, and then we'll figure out where we want to put that table. Probably put it over here by the campfire, just to give the impression that we have like a surface. A functionable surface that we can use things on. Well, that table is a little fancy to be used as a cutting board, but whatever, I don't care right now. We're just going to live with it at the moment, and that's just how it's going to be. Other things to think about. We do need to deploy our mirror, too. It sounds cooler than hanging up the mirror. We need to deploy it. The mirror is ready for deployment. It's a little low hanging. Maybe put the mirror up. Yeah, we'll put the mirror. I don't have a whole lot of areas I can put it. I guess we'll hang it up above. I do like the rugs. We'll get rid of the chair, though. The mirror is going to look weird sitting right there. Alright, so we've taken that down now. We might also consider removing a few beds. What is he covering right now? Just out of curiosity. 
So he's not even covering this way right here, so we need to lay down another totem too. I noticed in the past that they gave us another one. There he is. So let's lay down a second totem. I'm going to put him on the floor. There we go. Just a nice worshipful totem. I don't know who that is or what he is, but he's balding and he's happy. If I was balding, I don't think I would feel very happy, but you gets what you gets, I guess. For whatever reason, he's saying he's not happy. It's probably because this right here. Let's remove the hatch. I don't think we need the hatch anymore now that the floor is opened up. We'll bust the hatch out of the way, and let me try and replace that door from the last episode to see if I can get that to work, because that was a big concern for me. I didn't really like the way that was... See, the door is still off-placing. It's weird. And so now, it appears to have deactivated him. We need to follow the sparkles here and make sure they're going where we want them to. Well, the sparkles are sort of working, so I guess we'll remove that totem then. Since we no longer need him, and we'll see how that readopts. Okay, cool. Whatever, I don't question it. I'm not going to concern myself with it if I don't have to. Need to refill some of this food, so let's do that. Couple more salads. It just started the battle music. I don't know if we're under attack or what's going on. But. Well, I think this is probably a good spot to break off the episode. Let me think about some things to do in the next episode. We need to continue working down the craft tree, obviously, but I'm going to cut this one a tad short for the time being. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerd Castle for another episode of Deco Veer's Craft the World. I hope you like the game. I like it a lot. This was one of those surprise games that I ended up purchasing and. It was definitely worth the money spent, so I'll see you guys next time, take care out there, and hi-do, everyone!